Hello and welcome to this video about XGBoost. In the previous video, I have talked about how to create a GBM classifier in Python using scikit-learn and also discuss how to create a classifier using light GBM in Python. If you are interested in any of those gradient boosting techniques, then you can refer to my previous videos. In this video, we'll see how to create a XGBoost classifier in Python. We will also see how we can perform hyperparameter tuning on a XGBoost classifier look at variable importance and see how does the model performance change as the number of trees in a XGBoost model increase. The data that I will be using in this video for demonstrating XGBoost classifier will be the same data set that I have used in my previous videos. This data is from a Kegel competition. I have provided the link to that Kegel competition in the notebook and this notebook will be available both on GitHub and Kegel. I have provided the links to both in the description box so you can go and check that out. Let's get started. First we'll import the relevant libraries in Python. The most important here is importing XGBoost. Apart from that we'll import NumPy, Pandas and a few select functions from scikit-learn along with matplotlib. Let me discuss about the data. The data available from this Kegel competition includes a train.csv and a test.csv. So let's go ahead and first import train.csv using pandas read csv function. The output will be stored in a variable called tf underscore train. The data set has 200,000 rows and in terms of columns, the first column is id code, which is the unique identifier for each observation in the training data set. Next column is the target column, which is a dependent variable, which can take two values, one and zero. And then we have 200 independent variables starting from var0 to var1 and var2 and so on. Next we'll split df underscore train into our training data set and our validation data set. The first step is to get a list of all independent variable names. Then df underscore train is split into independent x variable and dependent y variable. These are fed into a function from scikit-learn known as train test split. This function takes three arguments, our x variable, y variable and an argument named test underscore size which has been specified as 0.2. This means that 20% of the observations in df underscore train will be randomly selected to be part of the validation dataset and remaining 80% will go into the training dataset. This can be seen from the output of shape function. 160,000 rows are part of the training dataset and 40,000 rows are part of the validation dataset. We can now look at creating our XGBoost classifier. XGBoost has a class named XGB classifier, which has a function called getParams. This function provides list of all parameters that can be tuned for a XGBoost classifier. I have used this to identify which are the most relevant parameters for my particular model and those parameters I've used in the next step. You can see I have created an object of the class XGB classifier and have provided certain hyperparameters. The first one is learning rate, which has been specified as 0.1. This tells the model the weightage of every tree in XGBoost classifier. Next is max depth, which has been set to 5. 5 will be the maximum depth for each tree in the XGBoost model. N estimators is set to 5000, which means that the model will create maximum of 5000 trees. Why this is maximum and not the total number of trees will be discussed subsequently. The next parameter is subsample, which is set to 0.5. This means 50% of the observations in the training dataset will be randomly selected for creating each individual tree in the model and every iteration will have different sample of observations. It helps us train the model quickly and also prevents overfitting. Subsample is a parameter for observations and we have a similar parameter for the features that we have in our data. It is called call sample by tree. In this case, I have specified it as 0.5, which means half of the features will be used every time randomly selected whenever a new tree is built in the model. Eval metric is set to AUC which means that while the model is being trained, it will be evaluated using area under the curve as a metric. And verbosity is equal to one essentially controls how much of the logs will be printed. The output of this line of code gives us an object of class XGB classifier, which is named as model underscore XGBoost. 
the next line specifies what will be the evaluation data set while the model is being trained. I have specified that as the X variables and Y variables of the validation data set because that is what I want for evaluation purpose while the model is being trained. The model can be trained by calling the fit function on our model object. We'll pass our X variables for training, Y variables for training and specify a parameter which is called early stopping rounds. The value of this is 10. This means that if the model performance does not change on the validation data set for 10 iterations, then the training will stop. This means no new tree will be built if the model performance does not change for 10 iterations. And this is why 5000 is the maximum number of trees that can be built for this particular model and not the total number of trees that will be built. The next parameter is just specifying what will be our evaluation data set and verbosity is set to be true so that we are able to see the output as the model is being trained. In the logs, we can see validation AOC being printed for every tree that has been added into the model. This helps us see how the model performance increase on the validation data set as number of trees in the model increase. I will just scroll down to the bottom to see how many trees have been built by my XGBoost classifier. We can see around 400 trees have been built for this XGBoost model. Let's now evaluate performance of this XGBoost model. XGBoost has a function named predict prob A, which gives us the probability of predictions for every observation that has been supplied to it. We will pass our X variables for training dataset and validation dataset to get the predicted values for training and validation dataset. We use array indexing on the output of this function. The reason for using array indexing is that predict prob A provides us with two values for every observation that we provide to it. The first value will be the probability of that observation being a zero and the second value will be the probability of that observation being a one. As we will be working with prediction probabilities of one, that is why one has been specified as part of this array indexing. We can pass these predictions for y variables to a function from scikit-learn which is called rock AOC score. This will give us the area under curve metric. I have printed AOC metric for both training and validation dataset. You can see that performance on validation dataset is 0.88. But this is our first iteration of the model and there is a possibility that performance on validation data set will increase if we are able to tune our hyperparameter. So let's see how we can do hyperparameter tuning. There is a function which is provided by scikit-learn which is called grid search CV and we will be using that. Grid search CV tries all possible combination of hyperparameters that we specify and gives us the result of model performance on validation dataset using a cross validation technique which helps us identify the best set of parameters that we can use. XGBoost has a lot of parameters that can be tuned. For the purpose of demonstration in this video, I will be using three hyperparameters as an example. The first parameter is learning rate, second is max step and third is n estimators. I have provided three values for these hyperparameters. So a total of 27 different combination of hyperparameters will be tried. The list of possible values of these hyperparameters have been transformed into a dictionary because this is the format that is required by grid search CV. I have also calculated and printed the number of combinations of hyperparameters that we'll have. You can see the value here is 27. So we have 27 combination of hyperparameters that will be tried. Now let's see the actual code for grid search CV. The first argument for grid search CV is estimator, which in our case is our XGBoost classifier. I have specified limited set of hyperparameters that we anyways need for a model, which includes subsample, column sample by tree, evaluation metric, and use label encoder is equal to false. These are not the parameters that we'll be tuning in this video. The parameters that we'll be tuning have been provided as the next argument of grid search CV by passing our params dictionary. Next is CV is equal to two. This specifies how many samples will our data be split in for the purpose of cross validation. In this case, the data will be split into two parts and there will be two iterations on this data. In the first iteration, first part of the data will be used for training 
and the second part will be used for validation second iteration will be vice versa i have specified cv value as 2 which is quite low for cross validation purpose generally we have cross validation value of 3 or 4 but i have specified it as 2 just as a demonstration for this video so as to ensure that the validation occurs quickly the next parameter of grid search cv is scoring which tells grid search cv what is the formula for calculating the scoring parameter or evaluation of our model i want to use area under the curve but the default function provided by scikit-learn is not suitable for grid search cv so i have created a wrapper around that function in this wrapper we will be providing three arguments first is our model second is our x variable and third is the y variable this is different from the default rock AOC score provided by scikit-learn which has just two arguments. The next argument of grid search CV is return train score is equal to true which means that as a output of cross validation training scores will also be printed and finally verbose is set to 4 which controls how much of the logs will be printed. Using this grid search CV we are able to create an object of this class. We will call the fit function on this pass our x and y variables and that will start the process of cross validation and hyperparameter tuning. This process of grid search CV can take a lot of time. You can see the results by an object called CV underscore results underscore. This can be converted into a pandas data frame. I have kept some useful columns out of this data frame and then sorted it by rank on the test score. You can see the output. The first row is the combination of hyperparameters which gives us the best score on the data set. Let's look at the first row in the data. This is the highest ranked combination. The mean score on the test data is 0.896. The mean score on training is 0.936. The value of learning rate is 0.05. Max depth is 2 and n estimators is equal to 3000. Now we can directly use these combination of hyperparameters and build our final model to get a better XGBoost classifier with better performance on validation dataset. But I wanted to show you how performance of model changes as we change our hyperparameters. I have written a bunch of code to plot the performance of the model with respect to number of trees and the depth of the tree. In this case the learning rate has been kept constant. On the x-axis is the parameters n estimators which means the number of trees. On the y-axis is validation area under the curve. And then in the plot we have different colored lines based on the depth of the tree. You can see the best performance that we have is when depth is equal to 2 and the number of trees is the highest. As we increase the depth generally the model performance decreases in our example and it can vary for your use case so you will have to perform the same exercise to see how this performs on your data set. We can conclude that best performance happens when depth is equal to 2 and number of estimators or number of trees is equal to 3000 for this data set. So now let's fix these two parameters which is number of trees and the depth and see how does the performance change when we change the learning rate. You can see in this graph x-axis is the learning rate, y-axis is the validation AOC and the performance peaks on learning rate is equal to 0.05. So you can perform similar exercise when you do your cross validation and see how does model performance change as you change your hyperparameter. So let's build our XGBoost classifier using the parameters that we found to be the best in our hyperparameter stage. Again we'll create an object of class XGPOOS classifier, specify all the relevant hyperparameters and create an object which is called model underscore XGPOOST underscore fin. This time the evaluation data set includes both the training data set and validation data set because I want to see how does the model performance vary on both training and validation data. This will be passed on to the fit function along with X train, Y train specifying the early stopping criteria and setting verbose is equal to true. Let me scroll down in the logs to see how many trees were finally built as a result of this training exercise. We have around 2400 trees in the final XGPOOST classifier that we have built. Let's repeat the same process of looking at AOC values on the training and validation dataset. 
This time you can see that the validation performance has increased and the validation AOC is 0.893. One of the benefits of providing a val set in the fit function is that we can look at model performance for each tree after the fit function has been called. We had passed two data set this time. One was the training data set and other was the validation data set. So we can look at results of both. We can call evals underscore result function on our model object which will give us our evaluation results. This gives us a dictionary which we can split into our performance on the training data set and our validation data set. You can see the first line here gives us the AUC value on the training data set and the second line gives us the performance on the validation data set and we'll use the key validation underscore zero and validation underscore one to get the values out of our dictionary. These AOC values can be plotted using matplotlib. In this plot, I have tried to show how does the model performance on the training dataset and validation dataset vary as the number of trees in the model increase. X-axis contains the number of trees. Y-axis is the area under the curve. You can see the model performance increases rapidly in the initial stages when the number of trees is low. But after a point, the performance stabilizes and plateaus out. The performance between training and validation dataset is not very large, which means that model is not terribly overfitting. Another useful thing to evaluate in a XGBoost model is the variable importance. There's an attribute of XGBoost model object, which is features underscore importances, which gives us the feature importance for all the independent variables in our model. I have converted this into a data frame with the first column as all the variable names in our data and the second column as variable importance. This data frame is then sorted based on variable importance in descending order. You can see the top 10 most important variables, the most important variable being variable 81. As the final step, we'll use our XGBoost classifier to make predictions on our test data set, which can then be submitted to Kegel. So first, let's read our test.csv and sample submissions.csv. We'll use pandas read csv function. Then we'll take out independent x variables of our test data set and pass it to predict prob a function of our final XGBoost model. We'll use array indexing as we have discussed previously. And this will give us predictions for every observation in the training data set. We'll store this as target column in df sample submissions. You can see the output has 200,000 rows, which is the number of rows in our test data set. And target column has predictions for each observations in our test data set. This can be converted into a CSV file using two CSV functions of pandas. And the CSV file can be submitted to Kegel for evaluation. I hope now you have a good understanding of how to create and evaluate an XGBoost model in Python. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to use the comment section. Thank you for watching the video.